Christian maturity. Christian maturity, the key element of patience for success. It is a proven fact of the scriptures. There cannot be success or successful work with God and in our lifetime without the element of the fruit of patience evidence in our lives. This cannot be overemphasized. Hence, they need to pray for it and also to grow it. The quality or the virtue of patience is presented as either forbearance or endurance. In the former sense, it is a quality of self-restraint or of not giving way to anger. Even in the face of provocation, it is attributed to both God and man and is closely related to mercy and compassion. Romans 5, 3-4 says, And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character and character hope. This tells us that tribulation produces perseverance or patience. God also wants us to be patient. He does this as we are walking in the spirit through life. God wants to produce patience in us to slow us down and to show us how to trust in Him. God does not test us just for the sake of testing us, but He tests us to teach us to walk in His ways and to trust in Him. 1 Peter 3 1 Peter 1, 3-7 1 Peter 1, 3-7 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through the manifold temptation, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. The spiritually matured Christian will be patient to stand on the word and not let the enemy persuade him or her to think he or she is anything less than who Christ says he is. Your spiritual maturity shows up when you are secure in your God-given identity through the cross and what Jesus Christ provided for you. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles, they shall run and not be weary, they shall walk and not faint. Even though we need patience in our relationships, in our circumstances, in our everyday lives, let's look at some specifics and also pray along with them, following as they pertain to us. When we look around the world and see the chaos or uncertainties abounding, sometimes your heart faints. But look at what Psalm 46 verse 1 to 6 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her than that right early. The hidden rage and the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. So when you see chaos around the world, what the Bible is saying that is in charge, is in charge of your life, is in charge of the environment, is in charge of the government policies, is in charge of everything that brings fear even into your heart. So it is paramount to rest even in him and on his word. And that's the only way you can have sanity even in this present world. Bible says where sin abound, grace did much more abound. So every Christian, every mature Christian knows that he will always rejoice whenever he sees sins or uncertainties around the world because the grace to survive and to live beyond the current situations will always be multiplied every time challenges are gradually growing around us. We also need patience. Even as we wait for our Savior's return, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, we need patience to actually see 
that is going to come. Noah built the ark for over 120 years. People must have mocked him. People will look at what is this man doing. He built it at a particular age until 120 years before the realization of the completion of the ark. And God told Noah, the, 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 the flood is coming. So also Jesus Christ is coming. As I'm telling you right now, people will have said, we've been hearing this over 2,000 years ago, but Christ is yet to come. But the point is, just like the flood came, Christ can come any moment from now. So it takes patience to wait on him. We also need patience in our marriage. That's the third thing. Patience in our marriage. First Peter 3, 5 to 8. Ephesians 4, 2 to 4. We'll read Ephesians 2. Ephesians 4, 2 to 4. It says, With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, enduring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Now let's say this prayer. I say, Father, please help me with the little things that piles up even in the house and in our heart. Father, please help me with the little things that piles up in the house and even in our heart. Father, please help me walk with my spouse according to your word. Father, please help me walk with my spouse according to your word. Father, please draw us back to the days when being together didn't feel so hard. Father, please draw us back to the days where being together didn't feel so hard. We also need patience in loving others. We also need patience in loving others. First Peter 4 8 says, And above all things, have fervent charity or love among yourselves, for charity shall cover the multitude of sins. There are so many people around us that are so unlovable. Everything you do, they you it is hard to love them. They can be moody, they can be mean, they can be difficult and, and impossible to understand. They can even blame you for things you didn't do and have expectations you cannot meet. Some people are only happy with you when the relationship between them the, the, between them favors them, benefits them. Now, the day you cannot satisfy their desires or requests, they change immediately. Look at Matthew chapter 5. Verse 44 says, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despise really persecute you. First Samuel 24 17 also says, And he said to David, Thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me good, whereas I have rewarded thee evil. Saul was speaking here. Say this prayer for me. Father, please help me to love those unlovable in my life and around me. Father, please help me to love those unlovable in my life and around me. Also say, Father, please help me identify where they are hurting and how I can make a difference in their lives. Father, please help me to identify where they are hurting and how I can make a difference in their lives. Father, give me your patience to be kind and compassionate when relating to them father please give me your patience to be kind and compassionate when relating to them we also need patience in taking the right steps patience in taking the right steps that's number five patience in taking the right steps psalm 143 verse 5 said i remember the days of old i meditate on all thy works i muse on the work of thy hands it takes patience to rest at God's feet and meditate on His Word. We can sometimes be really too impatient to wait on God's will. We are used to making things happen like sharp, sharp, like now, instead of waiting on Him to guide our steps. Of course, Proverbs 3, 5-7, to say after me, Father, please bring me back to the days I only hunger for your plant. Father, please bring me back to the days I only hunger for your plans. Father, please give me the patience to linger in your presence. Father, please give me patience to linger in your presence. Father, please pause my raising thoughts and self imposed target, time and limit. Father, please pause my raising thoughts and self imposed target, time and limit. Father, 
Help me to stop doing life by myself. Let me lean on you. Father, help me to stop doing life by myself. Let me lean on you. Let me lean on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Number six, patience also with our children. Patience also with our children. Psalm 127 verse 3 says, Psalm 27 verse 3 says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Sometimes we fail to realize they are just children. We dish out instructions and even sometimes carry out principles and guides and policies within the house that they cannot meet up to. And this only guides these children from stop stop them from being children. And so when we quickly sit down and look at it that these children are heritage of the Lord, we'll be careful of how we handle these children. We need patience to answer their questions. We need patience to endure their being childish. We were sometimes like that until we grew and became mature. They are growing and becoming mature. So sometimes our children are even like the opposite of the reward and can bring heartbreaks and frustration. And that's why you need to pray this prayer. Father, please help help draw my children to yourself. Father, please help draw my children to yourself. Father, please fill me with an everlasting patience and drown my anger with your peace. Father, please fill me with everlasting patience and drown my anger with your peace. Father, please help me parent my kids the way you parent me. Father, please help me parent my kids the way you parent me, with kindness and love. Father, thank you for giving these children to me. Father, thank you for giving these children to me. And lastly, what we're going to be looking at right now is patience in letting go. Number seven. Patience in letting go. Second Peter 3 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering towards not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We are sometimes stuck in a place we don't want to be. When we compare our situations to others, it seems everyone else is speeding forward, and this questions God's faithfulness in our situations it is so hard to accept our situations we ask what if my life always look and feels this way things have to change i must move on i need something right now right now but that's not god's way god wants you to grow when sometimes we want to run away say this prayer lastly after me say father Please take away my anxieties and desperation. Father, please take away my anxieties and desperation. Say, Father, please take stretch my perseverance. Give me the patience to wait on your timing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, thank you for knowing what's best for me and for helping me let go. Thank you, Daddy, for helping us to pray this time for in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.